Hey, what's up you guys? Shortimus Prime here, doing another movie review on X-Men First Class. Alright, so I saw X-Men First Class, a lot of you guys want to know what I think of X-Men First Class. I did a couple of boycott videos, uh, did a lot, a lot of complaining about X-Men First Class before I actually saw the movie and whatnot. Now, stay true to my boycott, no money was put towards X-Men First Class by me, or anyone that I know. There's only one movie I saw over the weekend that I paid for, and that was the Pirates of the Caribbean. So believe what you want, but I'm telling the truth, man. I'm not lying about it. I'd not cave in and buy a movie ticket to see X-Men First Class, but I did see Pirates of the Caribbean, which was actually pretty cool. Now, I saw a lot of reviews on X-Men First Class, and a lot of people said the movie was great. And, um, you know, but I was like, damn, all right, well, when I heard that, I was like, well, you know what? Being wrong isn't the worst thing in the world. I thought, you know, just based off of what I know of the comics um, I, and from watching the other X-Men movies that I thought it was garbage before I saw it. Uh, one thing I did take back, though, is, you know, judging so much off of the pictures and calling the movie garbage just based off of pictures, eh, that was a bit dumb. You know, you know, when you, you post these videos, you start a dialogue, you know, you, you make a video, you say something, people write comments back, and, you know, people, a lot of people are saying, like, you shouldn't judge the movie so much just based off of pictures, it's kind of dumb, at least watch it or something first. And I have to say, okay, that's, that's a good point. So, I actually did see the movie, and, uh, and for those of you that, you know, the haters out there that are calling, you know, calling me all kinds of names and stuff, they're mostly children. Actually, there's... Three people that are actually out there watching these videos, a lot of them are kids, you know, calling me a fag, calling me a dumbass, calling me a loser because I got a room full of action figures, saying that I never got laid when I have a very beautiful girlfriend, and, um, and then, you know, saying that, you know, I, I, I'm a useless human being, all kinds of terrible shit. And they, you know, their age range is, you know, young, you know, like eight or something to about 20, something like that. And then, uh, then you have people that are older that disagree with me, that are, you know, basically kind of saying the point that I just said about, you know, you should at least give it a shot. I understand it's not following the source material and that you're a fan of the force material, source material, but, you know, you know, you're giving, you know, geeks a bad name and you're following that stereotype and it's like, okay, I could at least listen to that because they're actually having a conversation. And then there's other people that are just totally on my side that just totally agree. Now... According to BoxOfficeMojo.com, and thanks to JRA Nightmare uh, for him sending me this link, is that um, with adjusted for inflation and everything, X-Men First Class was the lowest weekend uh, weekend opening earner out of all the X-Men movies, even uh, Wolverine Origins, which was, you know, by far, I think, the worst X-Men movie. Now, um, now there, there's some cool things about the movie that I'm going to talk about. Overall, I did not like it, but I will mention the things that I did like to kind of let you guys know that I'm not crazy and I didn't go in there just thinking, okay, this movie's going to suck, 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 because I already did these boycott videos and I really wanted to have an open mind and I actually thought it was going to be better than it was going to be because there's so many positive reviews about it. And it's incredibly foolish to think that the whole world out there is... is thinking one thing and then I'm going to be totally disassociated with that. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, everybody thinks it's a good movie. I'm going to go watch the good movie. Let's, you know, let's go see it. Well, I didn't think it was that great, but cool things. Uh, well, first off, that, well, if it was called X-Men Origins Magneto, I would have never made a boycott video about it at all. I actually wouldn't have it, it, it wouldn't have pissed me off so much. And that's basically what the movie is. It's an Origins Magneto movie. And Magneto was cool, I cannot argue that. Um, spoiler alert, okay, I give a lot of spoilers, alright? Oh, excuse me. First thing is that they show the opening scene from X-Men 1. Now this allows me to do one thing, is I'm able to use X-Men 1 as a reference, okay? Now in an interview, Brian Singer says to ignore X-Men 3 and ignore uh, Wolverine Origins. But, you know, they make it very clear that this is tied in. It's not a reboot. A lot of people keep telling me, no, it's a reboot. Shut the hell up. You're an idiot. It's a reboot. It's not a reboot, dude. It's a prequel. They're making it very clear that it's tied into X-Men 1. They show scenes exactly shot for shot from X-Men 1 at the very beginning of the movie, okay? When they promote the movie, they show footage from X-Men 1. I think maybe X-Men 2, but at least X-Men 1. I know that. So, I tried to watch this thing putting my comic books aside, all right, which... 
doesn't even make sense to me because it's a fucking comic book movie. You know, it's it's a comic book movie. How? Why do I have to put the comics aside and tell myself, okay, it's a total retelling, total brand new thing. Like, what's the point of it being a comic book movie? Someone left a comment saying, uh, like, it's like as if they made a Catcher in the Rye movie and then just totally revamped the characters and did whatever the hell they wanted to them. What's the point of making it, calling it Catcher in the Rye then? You know what I mean? And there would be hell to pay. But, you know, people have been, you know, Catcher in the Rye has been around for about 10, about 10 or 20 years longer than X-Men has. But still, people would lose their shit and people would get, there'd be all kinds of people flustered and everything, you know, the same way. So, and would that be totally unjustifiable? So, anyway, I'm putting my comic books aside, putting all the other X-Men movies aside from X-Men 1 and 2 aside, and just watching it for what it is and what I'm allowed to compare it to, right? So, um, Magneto was cool, like I said. His, uh, I, I like that he spoke a lot of languages, uh, made him a very worldly type of person. I thought that was neat. Um, you really feel his pain and his rage, you know, the death of, death of his mother. Um, I thought the character was really solid, and he just looked cool. The way he was moving, his, his powers and everything was really, really cool. Now, he was a lot more powerful than he was in the previous X-Men movies. The most powerful thing you really see him do in X-Men 1 and 2 is he catches the Blackbird. You know, that's it. Like, he catches the Blackbird. Compared to the other stuff he was doing in this movie, it's like, that. that's like peanuts, you know? So, I thought that was, in, it should work the reverse. Like, in time, he should get more powerful, I thought. So, I thought that was kind of weird that he's, you know, that he was that powerful, but not a big deal, not a major complaint. I thought Magneto was really, really cool. Um, the character development was solid. One of my, actually, one of my favorite scenes of the movie was when Magneto's trying to move that dish, and Professor X is helping him, and, you know, he kind of sends him to his happy place, and goes to Hanukkah, and, and, uh, and they snap out of it. It's actually Professor X is the one, you know, kind of shedding a tear, you know, and, and Magneto's like, I actually forgot I had that beautiful memory. You know, I thought that was actually really good storytelling. I thought that was actually a really good scene. That was one of my favorite scenes of the movie. I thought that was really good. Um, but Magneto was actually the only part of the movie that I really liked. And I guess that's what it was supposed to be. A lot of people were saying, oh yeah, the movie was great. Magneto was awesome. That's what everybody says. Um, I thought January Jones as Emma Frost, I thought she was hot. I wish she had an... A oh wait, sorry. <laughs> Emma Frost from the comics is supposed to have an accent. I'm not allowed to think about the comics. I'm going to... Forgive me, I'm going to keep doing that because it's a comic book movie. I'm going to accidentally keep thinking of comic books when I talk about the comic book movie. But, um, you know, it, they're actors. How hard would it have been to give her an accent or Banshee an accent? But I thought Emma Frost and Banshee were both really cool. I really liked uh, the diamond. The diamond form I actually thought was cool. I heard people say that they thought the diamond effect looked kind of weak. But I actually thought her diamond effect was pretty cool. And I liked that it had, like, a diamondy sound when she moved around and stuff. Especially when... Sebastian Shaw was choking, or Magneto was choking her, and, uh, Sebastian Shaw, didn't really, well, anyway, and, um, Banshee was really cool, I love the way they shot him flying around and everything, and the way, like, the, the sound, like, pushed him up, you know, and as he kept flying, I thought that was really, really cool, the actual sound he made, I thought was really cool, that's one thing I always thought would be tricky, like, how would they ever, you know, make Banshee come to life in, in a movie, and that was actually way cooler than I thought it would be, so... That was awesome. Well, no, in the trailers I thought it looked cool, but Banshee I thought was really, really cool. Azazel looked cool. Um, Azazel, I, I love Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is my favorite X-Man, and seeing, you know, even though I, I, I thought Azazel was different in the... Okay, not... Can't think about comics. Uh, but, you know, Azazel's BAMP and everything was really, really cool. I liked that they used practically the same effect that they used in X-Men 2, so I thought that was dope. That looked neat. Um, but... Aside from that, uh, I didn't really think the movie was as bad as, as as I thought it was actually dumb. Like, I thought the direction was great, the way they shot it and everything, but there's some, like, major plot holes in it that... Now, not, not, tell me if I'm wrong here, but, the, like, the whole surrounding plot behind this whole movie is that Sebastian Shaw is trying to ignite or accelerate nuclear war between the United States and Russia so that... This huge, you know, nuclear war will kind of, will have a fallout of just the evolved surviving mutants, right? 
So it would be a world of just mutants, because they're the most evolved creatures on Earth, thus they would survive. But the thing is, is that the only mutant with the ability to actually survive such a catastrophic event with such huge energy blasts surrounding the planet would be Sebastian Shaw. So wouldn't he be the only survivor? I mean, really, it doesn't make any sense to me that anybody else would survive that. Sebastian Shaw would, right? It makes sense that he would, but, you know, Emma Frost wouldn't necessarily survive that. She may have to stay in Diamond Four, but she could, but judging by, you know, she could break under metal, which is kind of actually dumb. Now I think about it. I guess you could crush Diamond with a metal bar. Can you? I don't know. I don't know. But if the metal bar could crush her, then a nuclear blast will destroy her. Um, uh, Riptide or Whirlwind, I don't know exactly who that character was. He de He's definitely gone. Zazel's gone. He has no place to teleport to. So his followers would all get wasted in this nuclear blast. And all the other mutants, you know, I, I guess Darwin should be able to survive, but apparently not because, you know, he got killed off pretty easy, which I thought was pretty dumb too. So, it, all right. So there goes Darwin. He's the only person I could have thought of. Now, here's the other thing is a lot of people said that, like, this thing captures, like, the, uh, the essence of X-Men. It's not exactly to the comics, yeah, but it captures the story of X-Men and everything. And I thought it was kind of funny that a lot of people said that because nobody, none of the X-Men actually look like mutants. Anyone ever realize that? Like, 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 like a huge, like, uh, you know, side plot thing is that Mystique and Beast have this, uh, this desire to look normal. They, they want to look normal. They're, they're tired of being different, you know, and they both share that, that, yeah, I look like a freak, and you look like a freak, and let's, like, both take a shot of this antidote, and, and whatnot, and it's kind of funny to me, because it's like, they both look normal, they both look perfectly normal, there's nothing wrong with the way they look, first off, Mystique is a shapeshifter, I can't feel sorry for that, dude, because I wish, I was, dude, if, if my normal skin was all blue, and I could look like however I wanted all the time, that would be fucking awesome, like, what the hell, that would be sick, I can't feel sorry for that. I'm sorry. Now, Beast, he has big feet. That's pretty freakish. Yeah, that's disgusting. But at the same time, out of all the mutant, you know, appearances out there, not the worst, dude. What did my girlfriend... My girlfriend hated the movie, by the way. She didn't even think Magneto was that cool. But she was like, so what's his motive? He wants to wear flip-flops? Like, his... So he's, he's being all emo because he can't wear flip-flops. Like, okay... And then, uh, and then Beast, like, he's just way too emo and whiny and all bashful-like and stuff. It's like, uh, uh, you know, and, and here's another thing now, going back to it being in continuity with X-Men 1 and 2, we see Dr. Hank McCoy in X-Men 2, right? And he's a human form, so they do a prequel, and he goes into his blue Beast form, but then in the future he goes back to flesh color again. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. And, um... And the whole thing with Mystique saying that, like, adding that part, if it takes 50% of your energy, you know, to hold a, you know, to hold a form, then you're using, you know, it's 50% of your energy you could use for something else. No, that's not how, that, that doesn't make any sense because in X-Men 1, she's fighting Wolverine looking like Wolverine. It's fucking Wolverine, man. So there's no way she could, you know, hold a candle to Wolverine if she's got to use 50% of her strength to look like Wolverine. You know what I mean? That, that didn't make any sense. So... It's little inconsistencies with their own movies, and I'm allowed to compare it to X-Men 1, okay? It makes it very clear that this is in continuity with X-Men 1. So, even disregarding the comics, and comparing it to the movies that I'm allowed to compare it to, huge flaws right there, man. It just, well, not huge. Uh, the bigger flaw is the whole Sebastian Shaw thing. If I'm wrong about that, correct me, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that's what the plot was, and it doesn't really make sense to me. Um... Professor X, jeez, Pref oh, well actually the relationship between Professor X and uh, Mystique was really annoying right off the bat, and I, and the way they make it seem is that Mystique can change form, you know, to people around her same size, but like she's a little girl, and she, she turns huge woman, like right at the very beginning, and <laughs> my girlfriend was like, I'm offended by that naked child, that's weird. <laughs> But, oh, and, there, and Quorum TV actually brought this up. He actually liked the movie, but he did bring this up that 
Um, they make it very clear in the first X-Men movie that uh, the mutation comes around puberty, but we see everybody, aside from Magneto, uh, go through their mutations as children. So, inconsistency there. Um, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. And um, I thought the uh, I thought Sebastian Shaw's character was paper thin. You know, I, I, I didn't really. But Professor X, yeah, Professor X was really um, just way off base from character, man. I just thought it was just like okay, the whole thing about him using evolution and talking about mutation as a pickup line, like get the fuck out of here, dude. That's 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 such bullshit. Because you know what? Evolutionary theory exists now, and that game is not going to work now in real life. Or you could say that he used his telepathy to manipulate these chicks into, you know, getting wet for him by him talking like that. But the thing is, is, is that that's hella off from the character that we, like, we see Patrick Stewart's Professor X as this very noble, trusting man. And, it, like, to see this younger Professor X as such a dick and kind of, you know, with very moralist kind of character, that's like, come on, dude. I don't know. I just thought it was way off. And you could say, well, I guess he'd gotten older over time and, you know, he'd become more responsible, but I still think it was way off of his character, especially when you see how close Magneto is to his character. His older self and his younger self are very, very tight-knit, whereas young Professor X and older Professor X are very distant and very opposite. So I thought that was pretty weak. Um... Yeah, so, and overall, it's like, yeah, the, the whole essence thing, I felt like none of the mutants actually looked, like, freakish in any kind of way. Like, this whole essence thing of uh, them capturing the essence of X-Men, none of them really looked like, all of them could just walk out into the street and look like totally normal people, right? Um, maybe not Azazel, but he's not even, he's one of the bad guys. So, looking at the group of X-Men, they all look like normal the people, so what... Like, how the hell am I supposed to actually get that? I didn't really get that feeling of them being really different because they didn't look very different. You know what I'm saying? And their whole, them sharing their state, I don't know, I just didn't feel it so much. At least with Storm, it's like, and as often the comics, the first X-Men movies where it's like, with Storm, it's like, okay, she looks weird, all right? If you were to see a black chick on the street with white hair and blue eyes, that'd make you kind of go like, what the fuck? Like... Wow, that, I'm trying not to stare, but that black chick has white hair, man. What the hell? Or Rogue, you know, not being able to touch people without them going into a coma. You know what I mean? That's, you know, that's kind of... That, that's that, that's something that, that's, that sucks, you know? But these other mutants, like, I, I couldn't really feel sorry for them in any kind of way. They all looked like perfectly normal people. <laughs> I guess Angel Salvadori had tattoos, but even still, so... I don't know, I, I just didn't... Um, I, I didn't. I thought the movie was kind of stupid. I, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was absolutely terrible. Wolverine Origins, I still think, is the absolute worst X Men movie, and it's actually kind of sad to me that this didn't do better than X Men Origin Wolverine Origins, because this is actually much better than Wolverine Origins. Now, Corum was asking me because uh, we did our podcast, by the way. Link to the podcast is at the bottom. Corum was asking, I know, do you think it's better than X Men Three? That's a tough one for me to say. Uh, I I think I uh, I think I I I maybe liked X Men Three a little bit more, but X Men Three was pretty stupid too. Those they're both uh, had their stupid. I don't know. It's a toss up for me. It, it, I can't really say. I really really can't say because overall put together as a movie, First Class was like a lot more solid and it didn't have like that whole. <clears throat> day to night shift and you know Magneto lifting a bridge for no reason at all that was hella dumb you know I'm not gonna review X-Men 3 last stand but there's a lot of stupid shit oh that's the other thing Beast man I actually think Kelsey Grammer's Beast was better than first class Beast which pisses me off because it's like if you're gonna bring back the character like that then make him better mm -hmm. why are you gonna make it weaker you know so I don't know just you know you guys you know, and you guys settle down. You guys get so pissed, like, especially these kids, man. You're going, going hella crazy on these comments, you know, calling me all kinds of names and shit, dude. What the hell? You swear you know me or something. Like, if you were to see me in person, would you really say that shit? I very well doubt it. By the way, I'm actually not even 30 yet, okay? So thanks very much, dicks. <laughs> and, um, 
and just because I have a bunch of action figures doesn't make my point, you know, any less valid than anybody else, okay? Because I was able to, you know, really put aside, you know, my my biases, you know, beforehand and really try to judge the movie for what it was. And um, I just really didn't think, you know, the special effects were cool, but I didn't think it was as awesome as everybody else thought because it, it just had, like, seri I, I thought there were serious problems with it, you know, especially because everyone was saying it's it's a thinking movie. You could think about it, and it's really good. It's like, the more I thought about it, the dumber it got. So, I don't know. But, um, but like I said, you know, I thought the cool parts were the same cool parts that the people that liked it, like, the parts that I liked about it were the same reasons why people actually liked the whole movie. So, it was consistent there. That's kind of a weird way of phrasing it, but you understand what I mean, right? All right, uh, nothing else to really say about that, um, but yeah, so, all right, that's my review, you guys, I'll catch you later, peace.